Hi, Caleb from Brown Nose here, back again with another installment of How to Paint Your Gun. So today we're going to be going over camo patterns, how to do camo patterns, uh, some of the methods that I use, not necessarily the only way, just some of the easier ways uh, and something you may benefit from. So some materials we're going to be using here, or well first let's just uh, do a quick brief overview of, of PPE. Um, I'm wearing gloves, got a respirator with uh, filters as well as particulate filters, and of course some iPro and good ventilation. All right, so uh, in the past installments of this series, you know, we talked about you know why to use Alumahide 2, um, all the other preparation work, how to just get your, your base layer on, and uh, just basic stuff like that. And in the last episode of painting the gun, we did just use larger pieces. If you want to paint smaller pieces, uh, one of the big challenges you'll run into with that is going to be how to hold those pieces. Uh, we did a video, which I will drop into this playlist, on using cardboard for holding small parts. So I'll just kind of throw that in there. I just kind of had that as an afterthought. All right, so some materials. One of the most, if you were to just jump on YouTubes and just uh, type in, you know, how to paint your gun, you'll see everyone for camo pattern is using a netting, like just any kind of netting they can find. And that's awesome, that's some really good material. And I have a couple of things here. Uh, this is just, what was this? This was a, a freezable Fun Pops bag, all right? So once your, your kids eat all the freezable Fun Pops, or you, you know, I'm not judging. You like, I like Fun Pops. Uh, you can use the bag as netting. So basically you would just hold this over and this is a terrible example there we go you would just basically hold that over and spray over it keeping in mind that everywhere the netting is touching is going to be your base color and everywhere there's a hole is going to be whatever color you're spraying so in pretty much every case when using any kind of netting uh, and then this one is actually my favorite this one's a, you can kind of see the pattern there. But yeah, everywhere there's a hole um, is where your the color you're spraying is going to be visible, obviously. I say obviously, it's the first time you do this that, that may not be super obvious, but uh, just keep in mind, whatever your base color is, that's going to be the color you see the least, all right? So if you want a color that's really visible, don't do that as your base color. Do that as your top coat. All right, and then stencils. There's a ton of different stencils out there. You can just like jump online and do like camo stencils. You can even find like multi-cam kits that are layered. You do like one layer, spray your colors, take, peel those off, do another layer, spray your colors. Uh, you can do a bunch of different like camo patterns that way, multi-cam, whatever. You can buy those stencils and you can make your own. Uh, something I've used in the past for making stencils is uh, the Silhouette Cameo 2. It's something like all your crafty people out there are using to make vinyl stencils and vinyl stickers and stuff. Uh, but you can use that to make stencils for, for this as well. I used to use it for electrochemical etching, but it works extremely well for making stencils for painting as well. Okay. Um, now, if you're going to go the stick on stencil route, you know, I mentioned in the previous episodes that um, there's two ways to cure Alumahide 2 or well two ways or let me back up here there's two different times you can spray other coats on alumahide 2 that's 30 minutes within the application of the first coat all right or after it's completely cured now if you're doing stick on stencils i would recommend waiting until it's completely cured then do your stick on stencils cuz once alumahide 2 is cured it's it's solvent resistant you know, taping whatever is not going to peel anything up. You can, I, I can take the acetone, wipe it with the acetone, and it's, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get it off. Now, if I take a rag with, a, and this is just kind of like sidebar, I'm going to sidebar for a second. If I were to take a rag with acetone on it, because acetone will wipe up anything, but once this is cured, if I take a rag with acetone in it and wipe it, there will be some like wolf gray on that rag, that's just extra color pigment. It's not actually removing aluminum hide. 
So that's something to note in the future whenever you're, you're messing with this stuff. The uh, reason I say that is because, like me, so this gun, you saw this gun completely assembled. This is the one I showed you uh, previously that was completely painted. I've been using that gun. So there was oil on this. I had to degrease this again. So that's, that's why I bring that up. So I wiped this down with acetone, got it nice and degreased, and got it ready for our camo coats. Okay. All right. And other ways to do camo pattern. Um, this is what we're going to be using today. This is just shipping paper. All right. It's just, it's just paper, just brown paper. And I tore it into strips and let me grab here. This is, this is what I use. Just, just packing paper. And I tore it into strips and that's what we're going to be using today. Um, you can use anything, you know, newspaper, or whatever. It'll work just fine. I'm going to be using that with a little bit of uh, masking tape. And if you're wondering where you can get this, just place an order with Brownells. We, we pack this into our boxes. So that's actually where I got this from. The Aluma Hide I had you know, shipped over from the warehouse um, to do this video series. This came with it. So there you have it. That's where you can get it. All right. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm basically just going to be taking this here and wrapping it around and then I'll tear it off and then tape it and then do that on a few different places on this receiver here and that's going to be that's going to be your camo pattern and what we're actually going to do once I have this on we're going to be spraying through the netting so it's going to be an interesting contrast and I'll just say this too, because I know people are going to be blowing up the comments like, hey, what, what the heck? What, plan, plan out your camo patterns. If you're, actually, if you're actually trying to camouflage your gun, what are you trying to camouflage it? Like, what, what's, what's the environment? You know, plan that out. You can even take, like, you, you can grab, like, dry dead or, you know, alive foliage from the area you're going to be at. Hold it up there, use that as your stencil, and spray on it. You can pull a piece off of that, that happy little tree and, and use that. There's going to be several more Bob Ross references throughout this thing. So, yeah, do that, especially like for your recce rifle stuff. Um, plan accordingly. Plan your camo pattern. Now, what we're doing right now, we have wolf gray, and we're going to be spraying uh, dark parkerizing gray just because I mean we're not we're not really planning for any particular uh, camo pattern I actually want this to be the opposite I want it to be seen so you guys can actually see what's going on all right so that's uh, that's what we're gonna be doing so it's gonna be a little interesting now something I will point out with your the stuff you're spraying through the closer I hold this like if I, I hold this really tight against it the lines are going to be nice and defined whenever I spray through it. If I back off just a little bit here and spray from a distance, the lines are going to be blurred. Okay. And the further away I get, they're just going to, they're just going to blur until they just disappear. So if you want nice crisp lines, you got to be right up against it. And on surfaces like this that are curved and you have a bunch of dips and angles and stuff, you're not going to be able to get crisp lines all throughout unless you use a stick on stencil. Okay. Even, even this stuff we're going to be using here today, once I wrap it, you can see this part here is nice and tight up against it. We're going to get a crisp line there. Okay. But where this angle is, you can see that there's an actual dip and the the paper is no longer making contact with the receiver. That's going to be a bit of a blurred line. So it's going to be more of a blurred line if we're spraying from the top because the paint's going to be going down into there. And it's going to be still a blurred line, but less of one if we're spraying down low, which for this, for the purpose of what we're doing, I don't mind that at all. I, there's going to be, there's going to be some non crisp lines here and that's perfectly okay. So what we're going to have is a contrast of 
a camo pattern going against the nice flat wolf gray, but all the all of the dark parkerizing gray is going to have that net pattern in it. So it's going to be it's going to be kind of interesting. It's going to it's going to it's going to look a little different because we're going to go nice and smooth and clean to a disrupted pattern and then back to smooth and clean and just kind of alternate that. So that's what we're going for and that's what we're going to do. Now, if you notice, I'm spraying my receiver assembled or somewhat assembled as you can see. So I attached the handguard to the upper and I'm just using I'm just using some aluminum pins here to to keep my upper and lower together. Um, if you don't have that wooden dowel, just stick a wooden dowel in there and that's fine. All right. And as you can see, we will be getting some spray inside of our upper and lower receiver. That's fine. I have most of it covered anyway from the previous application. Uh, Aluma High 2 goes on super thin, so it's not an issue. Unless you're doing, you know, two, three, four coats. All right. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and put our paper on and uh, we'll go from there. All right. So we have our camo pattern placed on here. And... As you can see, it's nothing too crazy. Nice and easy. I just uh, took those strips, wrapped them around, and secured them to themselves with a piece of uh, masking tape. And that was it. So you can uh, just take the the paper, hold it up, and just spray on it like that. Um, however, I like doing it this way to get everything covered because if you're just holding it up and spraying, you run the risk of having overspray in the area that you're trying to cover up on the next one. So um, I just go ahead and mask off everything and go from there. Now, I know we're only doing receivers here. You can do anything this way. It doesn't just have to be your receivers and handguard. You can do your stocks, you know, whatever. Um, and yeah, so just go to it from there. Now, you don't have to do the exact pattern I did you can do, uh, if you want like cross angles going across, um, all you need to do is just tear your paper at an angle and you'll end up with something you can do that way. Super easy. Now do whatever you want. You don't have to copy me, you know, go out on a limb because that's where the fruit is. All right. That, that might be my last Bob Ross reference. I don't know. Uh, no promises. Let's just keep going through it. Okay. So, I think now from here, we're just going to start spraying. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the ventilation fan, mask up, and uh, we'll get after it.
All right, so some things to note as I was spraying this. Um, I posted the camo netting up here and just kind of had it loose on there because I want the camo netting to kind of fade in and out and not be consistent all the way around. Uh, if you do want the, the camo netting to be consistent all the way around, you need to make sure you wrap it tight. All right, so you notice it's, it's up close here, so you'll be able to see it real defined there. It's far away here, so you may not be able to see it at all because I was spraying from different angles, um, but the point is it's going to kind of fade in and out, and that's that's the that's the effect we were kind of going for there. But again, if you want to see it all the way consistently, everything you want like that needs to be up there, nice and tight. All right, so that's pretty much it here. We're going to let this dry for I don't know 30 minutes or so. We're going to remove everything, then we're going to throw it in the oven. Um, if you wanted to do a different color, another layer uh, or something like that, uh, give it about 10 minutes. Let everything just kind of dry to the touch. Um, don't don't actually touch it. Just kind of eyeball it. It shouldn't be super glossy. So, you know, 10 minutes or so. Then you can go over with another color if you want to do another color. Um, about another 10 minutes or so. And then you can do that other color. That's about the maximum you can do because we don't want to be... Uh, 30 minutes over our first coat, if that makes sense. Remember, because it because it, of science, and it won't adhere properly. Uh, so a after that, if you wanted to do even more colors, you need to let it cure fully. Okay, so the timer starts whenever you sprayed that first coat, not after your last coat. Remember that. And also something you may have noticed, I was just kind of sticking my fingers in the magwell back here to help manipulate and turn it. That's a good thing to do, you know, not just for the camo pattern, but for any stage of the painting process. Um, I was also grabbing it where the paper is, which that's where the paper is, so that's okay, right? You don't want to grab where you just sprayed, obviously. All right, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to let it air dry. I'm going to go ahead and speed cure it for the sake of this video. I don't want to come back and do this, you know, 10 to 14 days from now. So I'm gonna speed cure it in the oven. I'm gonna get this gun back together and then uh, we'll show the completed gun because it would be a shame to cut everything off right here, right? All right, so I'll see you when we have a completed gun. All right, so we got our gun painted, cured, and put back together. And here is the end result. So as you can see, uh, everywhere that we had paper was left wolf gray. And then the netting, since it was kind of not super tight against the, the gun, it kind of waves in and out. Like some areas it's really defined, other areas it's not. And uh, came out great. It's kind of exactly what we were looking for. All right, so that concludes it. In the near future, we'll be adding some stuff to the playlist, um, like how to paint optics. So spoiler alert, it's just tape everything off and then don't bake it. Uh, but we'll get, we'll get more into it than that. And then, you know, whenever I have another project I, I want to do, I'll just do it on camera instead of just doing it with the cameras off. All right. So if you have any questions at all, you're stuck, you don't know what to do, you just can't get something figured out, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Leave a comment down below as well. Uh, there's a ton, ton of guys out there and gals that, you know, know what they're doing whenever it comes to painting firearms. So they can chime in and help you out as well. All right, if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button, as well as that notification bell so you get notified whenever we post another video. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.